We actually didn't have it in the trailer. <laughs> I was going to say, you have another one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's beautiful. I bet you have a lot of memories. I do. Oh, it's incredible. Hey everyone, welcome to another video with Rungi Cars. I'm Chris Rungi, and today we have something pretty special to share with you guys. This car is a 1961 Porsche 356B, and it was added to the Rungi collection in August of this year. But the story behind this car is something that I think you guys are really gonna love. So in August, I get an email describing a car that is literally just minutes from my workshop here in Minnesota. It's been in a garage for about 20 years and it's still owned by the original owner. There's a phone number at the bottom of the email that of course I call right away and uh, a lady picks up the phone and, and goes on to describe this car to me. Uh, it belonged to her father's girlfriend. Her father's 92 years old and his girlfriend, the owner of this car, is 88 years old. She and her then husband bought this car new at the factory in Germany. The crazy thing about this story is that she's owned it for 62 years and never had a driver's license. So during the phone conversation, she goes on to describe the car, describe that it still has the original engine, original transaxle, uh, the color and whatnot. Throughout the conversation, I realized that this car is just minutes from where I spent a lot of time uh, when my wife and I dated. I literally proposed to my wife just minutes from where this car was located. And the next step was to set up a time to go and look at this car. So this is where the suspense really sets in because we had to wait a couple more weeks from that phone call to when we could actually see the car. So many questions are running through my mind, like could it be a 4Cam or is it just a Carmen Ghia? I mean, who really knows at this point? Finally, the day comes and we're driving down this minimum maintenance road to a cottage where Lori meets us to see the car. So Lori has kind of been the caretaker for this car for about 20 years. It's been shuffled around through different garages and places where it's been stored and it landed in this cottage about 15 years ago. All right, so we're there, we see the car in person, and it's amazing, you know? I wasn't sure what to expect because the car had sat so long. Clearly, the brakes appeared to be stuck. The engine was definitely stuck, which we weren't expecting. And so you have all this anticipation of, of what the car is, and then how do you really put a price on it? I've learned there are certain things in life you just can't afford, and then there are other things that you can't afford to pass up. And this 356 kind of fell into the latter category. So they bought it in Germany. Bought it in Germany at the factory. So here's, here's the keys. So like the warranty, like all of this, the maintenance. Um, wow. This is where all the service stations are. Here's a service book. Oh, and it's stamped. Purchase date. So how long was it in Germany for? Do you know? I can ask her, she'll probably remember the, the conversion instructions on how to take the top oh, off. Okay, yep. Okay, so that was my other question. Did they buy three all at the same time? Because you said they, they had bought, three. They bought two at the same time. I didn't realize they bought a third one. Gotcha, incredible. So I finally come up with what I think is a decent number for the car and Lori mentions to me that she's really not dealing with anyone. Uh, someone outside of the family is taking offers. And this person has reached out to various brokers online to take offers from them as well. My heart sinks. Who knows where this car could go? And hopefully wherever it goes, the history isn't lost. So I reach out to the gentleman who's uh, representing the car and I let him know what I found upon inspection and the number that I'm comfortable spending on the car. He lets me know that he's dealing with a party in Beverly Hills and that he would give me a heads up on where things are at and we can go from there. We hang up the phone and about a week goes by and I don't hear anything. So I decide to call him and find out where things are with the car. And he says the car's sold. 
and I'm devastated. So I thought for sure he was gonna get back to me and let me know where the number was and what I was up against. And he said, no, uh, the car sold, the paperwork has been processed and the deal is done. I hang up the phone and tell my son and we are licking our wounds, we're so bummed. I told my son maybe I should call Lori and just let her know that I'd be willing to pay more and see what she could do. And so that's what I did. We left it at that. At this point, I'm thinking about what all I can sell to raise more money to try to buy this car and come up with some ideas. So I put together the highest offer I'm willing to make and write it up on a bill of sale and email it to uh, Lori. Another day goes by and Finn and I are here working along and kind of wondering, you know, what's going to happen. And my phone rings and it's Lori. And I'm kind of wondering, like, is the car sold? Did we get it? And, and so I answer and Lori says, congratulations, you're the new owner of a 356. And Finn and I looked at each other and just celebrated. We we're so happy. This whole thing was such a roller coaster ride and it still wasn't a done deal yet. Lori asked me how quickly I could transfer the money. So I scrambled to get this whole deal done and we did it. And the next step was going to pick up the car. Uh, again, we had to wait another week to be able to even go and pick it up. So the day comes to finally uh, pick up the car and surprisingly, the car actually rolls. The brakes aren't stuck and we're able to get it up on dollies and up into the trailer and make the short journey back here to the shop. But before, returning to the shop with the car, I was able to talk with Lori more about the history and this car's incredible story of crossing the Atlantic and landing in New York, uh, learning more about Karen and her history traveling around Europe in this car. And I'm just blown away at the story. So I thought it would be awesome to get the car back up and running as quickly as possible and meet Karen. We had not yet even spoken with her and we wanted to see if she would like to be reunited with the car and take her for a ride in it. That became our number one priority. So we got the car back to the shop safe and sound and wasted no time unloading it and just looking at exactly what all was here. For some of you who might be wondering what exactly is this car, this is a 1961 Porsche 356B Cabriolet. The color is slate gray over red leather. Now it has a factory hardtop that Karen specifically ordered color match to the car. Um, in digging into the history, I was able to get my hands on a Cardex, which is the original warranty card that was issued by Porsche to go with the car. The Cardex says exactly who originally bought the car, the dealer where they ordered it from, the options that it came with, like cocoa mats and seat belts, along with other vital information like engine number, transaxle number, all of which match this car. It's always like a treasure hunt when you get something like this, looking for original pieces and clues to the car's history. And this one, Definitely didn't disappoint. We found some really cool stuff with this car. We had still not spoken with Karen and got her story about this car, which we were so excited to do. 
So we're kind of just piecing together the history through all the documents that we have here. All the guys showed up and we finally rolled it into the garage that night. So we make room in the shop and get the car on the lift and start tearing into it, finding out what we need to do to get it mechanically back on the road. Uh, because the original engine was stuck, that's the first thing we knew we needed to pull. And I had an 1883 uh, twin plug 356 engine that I've just kind of had here at the shop for almost five years without a home. And it turns out that that engine is within four months of the build date of this car. Next up, we turned our attention to brakes, um, transmission, suspension, basically restoring all of the drivetrain and then reinstalling it in the car. Now, you guys might be asking, what about the pans and the underpinnings? To our surprise, they were really, really solid. At this point, we didn't see any need to replace any metal in the pans, so we were just gonna clean it up and get the car back on the road. We treated the car to a fresh set of period correct Michelins. Tony's suspension was kind enough to send us a care package with all the original spec suspension dampers for this car. And finally, it was time to get that twin plug installed. Now I had to convert everything on the twin plug back over to six volt. Finn had the honor of turning the key and listening to that engine run. So we were able to back the car out and drive it around the lot at the shop, but it still wasn't road worthy because we needed to do some adjustments to the clutch. It just wasn't engaging and disengaging properly. The time finally came one night where we felt like we had it dialed and Finn and I decided to take it out for a drive. Here's that moment. E-brake on? Nope. Six volt lighting leaves a little bit to be desired. Although it looks pretty bright on the camera. It's not oh, as bright it's as not bright at all. And those are the brights. We probably need to adjust the headlights too. So during this time, we had still not cleaned the car. We, we left the car completely as we found it. We only cleaned the mechanical components. Griot's garage ended up sending us a care package to go with the car. So the day before we were going to meet Karen, we decided to do the detailing on the car and go through, give it its first car wash in uh, well over 15 years and uh, detail it out. So in dealing with a car like this, you have to strike this balance of, of retaining the original patina, but also correcting areas where there's like light garage wear um, things like that in the paint. So we're gonna walk you guys through this process as we clean it up and prepare it to go and meet the original owner. We've gotta give a big shout out to our friends at Griot's Garage for sending over this care package to address everything that we knew we were gonna to have to tackle with detailing the car. Finn and I wasted no time uh, prepping the car for paint correction. This included masking off all of the trim uh, bright work, vinyl, and rubber. A closer look at the paint really shows just what we're up against in cleaning this car up. Uh, we want to leave 
the things that tell the car's loving story, but we want to remove the careless scratches and scuffs and things like that. At first glance, the interior really doesn't look that bad, but it is pretty dirty. It hasn't been cleaned in a long time. As we're working on the car and we're detailing it, and you're thinking about all this history and, and that, you know, Karen owning this car for 62 years, never having a driver's license, she was the passenger in this car this whole time. And, and you're kind of like mentally preparing yourself, like, what would that even be like? It's almost like a child to her, I can imagine. And at the same time, maybe I'm way more excited about this than, than she is. So the car is fully detailed, it's cleaned up, and now it's time to get a couple more miles on this thing before we bring it down to take Karen for a ride. we've been waiting for. <laughs> we actually didn't have it in the trailer. <laughs> I was gonna say, you have another one. <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful. I bet you have a lot of memories. I do. Oh, it's incredible. We've done a whole bunch of stuff to it since oh, we got it's it. beautiful. <laughs> mm. <laughs> In the little bucket seats. Mm -hmm. Well, we need to take you for a ride in it. <laughs> Just around the thing would be fine. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it'll quite compare to the Riviera, but <laughs> yeah. Well, help you get in. <laughs> Finn found this under the seat. Oh. <laughs> it was stuck to the floor. <laughs> um. <laughs> Bring back memories? Yeah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll start it up. All right, here we go. Here we go. Turns on a dime. Uh-huh. This engine's a little more powerful than the last one that was in here. But. Well, we got the smaller one because we figured we wouldn't use the big one. Sure. So. Yeah, we had some fun with this. I've been to Austria, wow. Netherlands, France, been a lot of places. And it corners the beautiful. Oh, it does. And it sounds so great. It does, yeah. I mean, it just, I couldn't believe it. The first time we drove it, Finn and I were both just enamored with this car. You can tell it. It's been very well loved. Well, I'm the one that wanted a Porsche. Just he was thinking about getting a new beer with it. Sunbeam. Uh huh. And I said it looked like a grass. Oh, you like? So that's how you ended up getting it. So then you went to the factory and. Mm -hmm. Wow. We were stationed from our valley. We had a um, big thing going. He went the first time. Okay. Did you ever name the car? No, and I usually name everything. I get name him. Our poodle's name was Diva. Diva. Oh. D-I-B-A for Fara Diva. That was when the uh, straw I ran by me. Give him a son. Oh. His wife's name was Fara Diva. Oh. 
So the poodle did ride in here. Mm-hmm. But she is big fat. Oh, uh, and a full-size poodle. She's a miniature. Oh, okay. I think this is Deba. The maroon. Right here. Oh, oh, the the marks. That's from the from your, dog, your old poodles. So you've never driven the car. Mm -hmm. um, have you? You've never had a driver's license. I had a permit, but I never did both. I did a real. I had a real American. I driven. Uh huh. I never did. Wow. And so that is just incredible with this car that you have been the passenger. I was thinking about it when we were cleaning it and working mm -hmm. on it. I thought, and of course I haven't got to meet you till today, but I thought, Karen, this is Karen's seat. <laughs> Mine. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Montana, man, didn't know what kind of car this was. Really? I'm sure it was a new sight for so many people. And what year was that in Montana? When we came back in 1960. Okay. When you were in Germany? We were in Germany, yes. And did you order this car? Or did you... Um, we, or, we ordered it because we wanted to call we wanted. Okay. And in fact, I think it was a we picked this one up. Um, very person had one and he had his parking spot and it kept the metal bars but no one could enter uh -huh. the car. But it was a caramel color. Oh wow. And the interior was caramel. Uh-huh. And it had a wide wheel corduroy on the center corner. Uh-huh. It was a beautiful car. Oh man, that's amazing. But no, we ordered it. We wanted this. We, we didn't think we need a rate. No, that's what engines are for. <laughs> Just priceless. I was telling everyone if I could have had a camera where I could have seen, seen the smiles that it brought to people's faces. It was very fun to see. Like well, and every time I would force it to be a person, it's always come on or waiting. Yeah. It didn't matter what theory anyway. It was it was like a camaraderie mm -hmm. family. I have an old Volkswagen bus, and on the back of my bus, there's a sticker that says Porsche Frank. That was kind of a thing back in the 70s, yeah. 60s. You know, it was so special back then to have one of these cars. And it still is pretty special, but uh, I think a little bit of that has been lost. A lot of that has been lost. Well, it, yeah, I can turn right here. I asked a friend of mine who has, um, done the Bonneville land speed races. He's, I think he's almost 90 years old and he's built a couple engines for me. I asked him what the best period of time was that he's lived, that he thinks like the real golden era. And he said it would have had to been the, the mid fifties into the mid sixties. He felt was really the, the greatest time with the innovations in automobiles and power and engine and the sports cars coming into the United States from Europe. People do. People do. Well, I think stories like this and cars like this help keep that alive. They bring together people, you know. That's. I'm so glad you came and, and did this with us. Well, we'll bring this down to other events down here so we'll make sure that you know about them because I'm I consider myself a custodian you're the <laughs> you're the uh, true owner I'm mommy <laughs> yeah then we can just drive a little bit longer she yeah. said we may not be able to get her out of here so <laughs> she's gonna stay with her baby now what compelled you to order a Porsche 
I liked the way they looked, and I just liked it, and I have no idea why. <laughs> it just talked to me. Yeah. And so you, you took delivery of the car, you did the factory tour, and mm -hmm. then... Um, then we drove back up. And you got the car that day? and you drove it back up to northern Germany? Right. What was that like, your first ride in it? Wonderful. Yeah. Because with the Volkswagen, I thought we were running out of gas, and he said, no, we were just going uphill. <laughs> <laughs> that's so, awesome. But the Porsche had a little more power. Uh, quite a bit. Oh, that's great. Oh, we were in the mountain to the, in the Alps, and snowy, and a deer jumped. If we'd have been in a larger car, we would have hit it, but it, right over the front. Oh, wow. You've driven this through the Alps. Well, you've been the passenger mm -hmm. in it. And all over, how many countries total? You said Belgium? Belgium. Uh, Holland for the tulips and oh, the cheese. Wow. Um, every time we, well, we went just about everywhere. The car didn't get to Spain or Portugal. Oh, it's easier to but say the places you didn't. <laughs> you got to France. Uh huh. And um, just uh, Austria. So, do you know what year then you brought the car back to the States? Oh, it was the year uh, Kennedy was assassinated. Ah. It been. was that fall, the spring of that year. Because wow. I remember where I was at that time. And uh -huh. that been it. So, on the SS Buckner, when you came over with the car, that had to be incredible as well, to have your, your baby <laughs> in the cargo bay. Yeah, hoping it survived that, because the, the ship would go, the waves are so bad, they'd go up like this, and then I thought, we're gonna go over, we're gonna go over, and then go boom, 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 boom. Oh and then goodness. it would go the other way. Yeah. And um, and in, in that time, we had to meet with a whaling ship who'd had uh, medical. And so they brought him over on the bosom chair in those waves. Wow. And my husband and I were wrapped in a couple of blankets. We, we shouldn't have been there, but we were in kind of in a door entrance watching. Wow. So when you landed here in the U.S., you went uh, then in New York. It? Okay, and were you living in New York? No. Nope. Then we had to drive. Oh, it was hot. It was May. It was so hot, and uh, so then we drove to our place and to my mom's place in Minneapolis. Okay. We stopped in Wisconsin, I think. Huh. And that trip was you drove the car. We drove the car from New York from to New York. Minnesota to Montana. And was Montana home then? Montana, and then, then we went, then he, uh, he had his San Francisco, his California license. So we went to San Francisco for a couple of years. Wow. And then came back okay. to uh, Montana. I see, I, I saw in the records, there's some pamphlets from the Porsche Club uh, San Francisco region. Mm-hmm. So you must have done some events there. We did, we did some, what were they called when you go on a tour? Uh, yeah. When you all meet and you go and... and a rally. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> That'll <wow>. work. <laughs> yeah. That had to be a rally. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. Wow, so this car, it has traveled the world. Pretty much. It's my baby. Yeah, well, I told you I'm just a custodian. I'm so honored to be able to have you in it and bring it back to life and well I'm glad she has a home yeah. for a while <laughs> yeah and it's it's right close to where you had it all those years yeah. too well I'm glad she's in a happy place <laughs> <laughs>